of Total Blackout will be here live. And either that Myra is getting taller or the iPad is shrinking. Oh. Matt will review the iPad mini coming up on Gadget Talk. Oh. John. Yeah. I'm so happy to have you. Well, you're dancing to no music right now. I know. Now. I just feel like dancing in my head. I love it. I'm so happy to have you back on. I'm, it's great to be back on. Listen, I always, when I come here, I feel like I'm coming home. Oh. You ah, are. shut up. You're home. I this am. This is home. I know. You're my TV wife. And you're my TV husband. Uh huh. Oh. Fantasize all you want out there. <laughs> Which I don't know. Fan fiction. Um, how have you been? What's I, going on? I've been good. I've been traveling a lot. Where I've been running Arrow, around. You're doing Arrow. I'm doing Arrow up in uh, Vancouver, mm -hmm. which is hello everybody in Arrow. Hello, thanks for watching. Great show. Great show. Yay! See. Okay. Now, um, also, I've uh, you know Hollow Earth, the book I wrote with my sister, the fantasy uh -huh. novel. It's out. It's doing really, really well. And nice. you, can, you can pick it up in stores. And you got more creams or something? I got a lot more creams. Yeah. In fact, if you come to my dressing room, I can I can let you test my face cream that I have for you. <laughs> First off, I'm sick of you talking about your creams because last time you were here months ago, you said you were going to send me a box of creams and you didn't send me anything. Not one of them. You did not. Not you, one of them. You did not just throw up the hand at me. I did. Okay. The finger. Listen, the reason I didn't send you any cream yes. is because it's very hard to ship. Okay, and I would promise you that. Th what do you mean it's very hard to ship? Because just... it costs money, and I'm not forking into my bank account to send it. You're Are you loaded. kidding me? Come on. I am not. You're loaded. I am not sending you cream transatlantic. Well, then I'm not going to talk good things about it. There, so are some, there. there are so many jokes there that I can't even touch no, them. No, you can't. So you just shut your mouth. Let's run down the top things on the web. <laughs> We're going around the net. Week. Episode 7 is on the way, and Disney is the new emperor of the Star Wars universe. Now, if this is what we're in for, I am totally on board. Sand people always ride single file to hide their numbers. <laughs> Disney will have to cut away when the bantha licks its own genitals. <laughs> Got a kick out of that. I love that line. You know, it's less cute when the bantha takes a dump. The sand oh. people do not travel with little plastic baggies. <laughs> it sucks. Uh, uh, do you have uh, any dogs? I love that this is the poop show. Oh, I got lipstick on you. Really? Do you have any dogs? I, I do have three dogs. Do you dress them up? I do dress them up. I dress them up for Halloween, and I've, I've actually just bought them Christmas outfits. Oh, what are their Christmas outfits? Well, we've got Santa Claus, who, Captain Jack, my Jack Russell, is going to be Santa Claus, and then Charlie, uh, my Golden Spaniel, and Harris, my black spaniel, they're gonna be reindeer. Oh. Does it have a little beard? It a actually white beard? does. Oh my god, that's it precious. Totally does. I've dressed my dogs up in Christmas outfits too. I've actually sent out a Christmas card with them dressed up in their little Mrs. and Mr. <laughs> we should be married. We should. We should. Because we love dressing up our dogs. <laughs> oh yeah, I love you. Uh, and now a lady of Eastern Europe goes to the store. I love this. Try a little Amazon. We've all been there. She wanted yeah. a Slurpee so bad. <laughs> we come from Ruke. You go back. Okay, let me do it again. Stop. Shh. We come from Ukraine. We break window now. It still sounded. It still sounded terrible. It's so bad. It keeps getting worse and worse. You know what? I hope she was wearing a safety thong. What's a safety thong? I'll show you. No, 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 no. Enough, enough. Moving on. Uh, watching two old people fight can be really uncomfortable, but watching two old turtles fight? No, that is a good time. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
<laughs> you know, this needs a barrel and twist. Kung Fu. is lucky that baby's other finishing move involves a full diaper. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, kids grow up so fast these days. I mean, I didn't kill anyone until I was 13. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Nothing. Back here. <laughs> and finally, tomorrow is election day, and if you've ever wondered exactly why our voting system is set up the way it is, maybe this fun educational video will answer all your questions. Well, it's time to vote in the USA, so get yourself to a polling place come Tuesday. Obama and Romney are skull and bones. They're the secret lizard beast that sits on two thrones. <laughs> when you toss your ballot in the voting trust, the paper is ground up into dust, then merged with milk and stirred to a horse, and the mixture is fed to a hungry horse. That horse is ridden until dead, and they bury its body, but not its head. The head is turned to a pungent cheese, and the ship in grace. The Chinese, the workers eat the cheese and get on a bus, make the phones and clothes and ship them back to us. We buy those iPads, Kindles and Nooks and use them to log in to Facebook where we argue politics with our friends and the whole thing starts all over again. From poll to horse to cheese to vote, none of it will happen unless you vote the election. Election round. Yeah. Yeah. If this is what PBS is now, then Romney might be right. We should get rid of it. No. no, really, I don't mean that. That's just a joke. You're supposed to laugh at that one. <laughs> don't blame me. I voted for the brain spiders. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for ATN. Yeah. Don't forget to vote tomorrow. Go brain spiders! Yeah. Still ahead, we'll discuss global warming with the smart and funny Cara Santa Maria. And yeah. later, Matt Myra tells you all about the iPad Mini and Gadget Prime. Yeah. All right. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Sony. Science never sleeps. It's on meth. <laughs> Joining me now to talk the latest signs, the senior science correspondent for the Huffington Post, Cara Santa Maria. <laughs> Cara, welcome. Thank you. Climate change is on everybody's mind at the moment, particularly because of uh, Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. And it's really prominent in the news right now. What are scientists saying, or with the scientific world saying, that we're, we're to expect in the future? I have to say, one, that's probably the one good thing that came out of this horrible, horrible storm is that people are finally talking about this. I've been, you know, kind of in the media circuit a bit, but definitely doing my writing on the HuffPost and, and trying to talk about climate change as often as possible. And it really took something as detrimental as this superstorm to get people to start talking about but, it. But how does that make you feel? Because you, like you said, you're someone who talks about it a lot. You're someone who it's been in your mind, you've been trying to put it out there in everybody else's mind mm -hmm. and it takes a disaster. Do you not, I mean, sometimes it's not like you want to shout out, wake up everybody? Exactly. Wake up. And, and the problem is, with things like human cause, you know, anthropogenic climate change, oftentimes what you see is this kind of difficulty connecting cause and effect. So it's really difficult to say, you know, Hurricane Sandy specifically was caused by climate change. We know that climate change made Sandy worse. We know that there's a, a higher percentage of, or a higher likelihood of things like Sandy to occur now because of climate change. But you also have a hard time looking at the cause and effect between nations. In mm. America, we are one of the big players in causing climate change. But we, exactly, but we don't really see the effects as often as people in low-lying, impoverished areas like Indonesia. There are places where they've been feeling the effects of climate change for years. So having said that, fossil fuels, I mean, a lot of people, the, the kind of opposing side who would kind of argue with you are saying that, 
you know, if we stop using fossil fuels and we kind of limit what we're doing and change our way of life, places like uh, China and India and a lot of countries that are moving forward are not going to change. And that some people are also saying that in the future we might have inventions or things that might help, you know, the cause and effect of it. What? How do you respond yeah. to people like that? That's my favorite argument. I actually um, was kind of roped into into debating a climate denier on the Young Turks recently. I didn't know before I showed up, and um, one of his arguments was like, "Yeah, we'll have inventions later, and they'll clean up this mess." And I was like, "Oh, those same scientists who are telling you that climate change is a problem, who you don't believe." Yeah. I mean, this this is it's crazy to me to think that like, well, let's just do what we want to do now. We'll just clean it up later. Yeah, I, no, mean, I, I live on a. Well, I have a house on a beach, and you know the last thing I want to wake up in like 30 years is in the morning rather than seeing the beautiful view and the beautiful you know the sea is a big wall that's holding the water back exactly and that's what we're starting to see I mean it, it large companies are starting to, to sketch up these new walls that are going to keep the swells down when, when large storm surge come in. So how do you feel then if it's something like that that's being built for defense reasons mm -hmm. like to, to stop floods? Do you think the floods <clears throat> excuse me naturally should happen? Well, not to the extent that they are. That's yeah. the thing. Right now, we're in a place where we are not going to be able to correct the effects that we've already caused of climate change. We could mitigate them, and we could hopefully start to have intense policy shifts that will make this problem slow down. Yeah. But we're not going to go back to where we were 10, 20, 30 years ago. Because the East Coast, is, uh, particularly of the U.S., is being hit every two years, it seems like, by a hundred year storm. Mm -hmm. And it's that's not going to change, is it? No. And this storm was what, like five times the size of... It was like a thousand miles long, I mean, wasn't it? Was it was insane. Yeah. It was insane. All right, so let's... This let's... is depressing. Why are we having such well, a depressing no, 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 no. It's, <laughs> it's depressing, but it's a, it's a good thing because, you know, yeah. we've got election day and these are things that people need to think about because you're not just going to the, the, the polls to vote for a president. Exactly. You're going to vote for the future. You're going to vote for your life and in one, the future. And one thing that's really frustrating is that neither of these candidates has really taken it upon themselves to discuss these issues. It, it took this storm to get people to start talking. What are they afraid of? I mean, from your point of view... Big what, oil? Hmm? I mean, they're... They're both kind of in bed with big oil, yeah. and that's really the difficulty. So, so I mean, for me, I look at what what is the most progressive policy on the line. But honestly, I'm let down by both candidates when it comes to. to All right, put it on the table. Let's yeah. talk about something completely different: uh, genetically modified food. Now, there's talk. Mm. And, <laughs> <laughs> mm, yummy! Yeah. Now, I have to say that you know, and they're they're talking about there's some uh, uh, things in the elections in some places saying about they're going to have to label. Yeah. Uh, here in California, in particular. Yeah, we have Prop 37 here in California. Right. So, um, um you know, do you think we should label it because in, in Europe they put labels on mm -hmm. genetically modified food you know yeah. and, and so I know that we're eating that kind of stuff sure and that's I think this is a really sensitive issue it's a really difficult issue and it's very hard to get you know the right answers and and here in the next 90 seconds I'm sure we're gonna sort all of this out <laughs> um, <laughs> no you know for me I don't think that labeling is necessary right. I personally vote I already voted by mail and I voted no on prop 37 but uh, you know, scientists have different perspectives on this. Um, some are for it, some are against it, and some are kind of ambivalent. But you do see that large science organizations like the AAAS has come out against um, labeling. And I think the difficulty is that a lot of kind of liberal, progressively minded people mm -hmm look at their their voting guides and they look at other liberal progressively minded people who are all saying vote yes we have a right to know we have a right to know and when they look at kind of the scientists who say vote no they see that we're on the same team as Monsanto and so they get really scared because they think oh we must be paid off by Monsanto it does happen sometimes in life where the bad guy and the good guy have the same opinion <laughs> about something because that thing itself maybe isn't evil mm. and and the truth is the FDA labels foods if they are known to cause harm. It's important to them to put a label on something to tell the consumer this could be dangerous if you have an allergy or whatever. There's nothing, nothing. harmful about genetically modified so, organisms. And you, and you would eat it? Of, I, we all eat them. 70% of the food in the grocery store is genetically modified. Well, that's modified. the other thing. Americans don't realize they've been eating them for quite a long time. And, and the fear is, I actually read a really good article um, about, it was written by an African farmer in Kenya who was saying, you know, you need to think globally when you vote locally because voting yes on Prop 37 is actually going to have negative implications downstream for impoverished farmers. We need to be able to get these GM crops. Mm. And if we start to see a big push in these really developed kind of first world countries against GM crops, we're going to see a harder and harder time feeding the poor across the world. And that's really why I'm pro um, GM foods. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love talking to you. Come you back too. and talk to me again. Nice, so nice to see you. Pleasure <laughs> to meet you. Thanks to Cara Santa Maria for the, from the Huffington Post, everybody.
Whether you're voting for the evil empire or the less evil empire, get out and vote tomorrow. If you don't know where to vote, log on to google.com slash elections. It will tell you where your polling station is. If you don't vote, then you can't bitch. And I don't want to hear that you're pissed off about the government. <laughs> Still ahead. <laughs> Matt Farah heads to SEMA to break down the biggest wins and biggest fails of the show. Relive the classic battle between good and evil when G4 brings you heroes. See the entire series four hours at a time every Tuesday on G4. shows and find out the best and the worst it had to offer. What's up? Welcome to the 2012 SEMA show here in Las Vegas. Now, as is usually the case with Las Vegas, sometimes things go really well and sometimes things go horribly wrong. SEMA, of course, is no exception. Today, I'm going to take you inside the halls of SEMA, show you a few of my favorite builds, as well as some things that you should probably never do to a car like, say, add velvet. SEMA is the largest gathering of aftermarket equipment manufacturers in the U.S. If you're looking for cars pushing the limits of new technology and raw horsepower, look no further. SEMA does not embrace the subtle, but if there is a company that does subtle properly, it is most certainly Icon. And this is their D200 Reformer. It's a 1965 Dodge pickup mounted on a 2006 Dodge Super Duty engine, chassis, and driveline. And as with all of Icon's projects, the real meat of it is in the details. The Banks Performance modded Cummins turbo diesel engine is capable of producing nearly 975 pound-feet of torque. Jacked up on a Baja Chase suspension and sitting on 37-inch BF Goodrich tires, there's pretty much nothing this Icon can't clear. But it's all about the details, and Icon didn't miss an inch from the stainless steel trim to the bison leather seat. This truck drips badass. This truck right here will cost you about 250 grand. Some things you should never do when building a custom car. You should never cut the top and bottom off the stock steering wheel. You should never use powder blue wheels with powder blue paint. You should never have bodywork that covers the windows, but only part of the windows. Basically, you should never build this. Every year, SEMA is totally dominated by one particular car. Last year, it was a Camaro. The year before that, it was a Mustang. This year, it is the Scion FRS. It sports a wide body kit from Gretti called Rocket Bunny that really enhances the car's aggressive stance and accentuates the car's existing body lines. Inside, you'll find Recaro racing bucket seats, a Momo steering wheel, and a roll bar. Throw in some Toyo RS racing slick tires, sitting on 18-inch BBS wheels, and you're looking at one nice little track car. And the value of all the stuff done to this car, you'll have a complete build for 50 grand. I think that's a good buy. Now, don't get me wrong. I like monster trucks, and I'm a fan of America. But when you combine those two things, you get an abomination. The worst part about it is, if you just look right here, it's awesome. And then everything else is literally a nightmare. Yo, yo. I have known Chuck Mallet for a long time, and he is insane, and that's why I like him. And this is his Pitbull Solstice Coupe. And even though the Solstice has been out of production completely for a couple years, Chuck still finds a way to bring something totally mental to SEMA. Under the hood is a monster LS7-based 454 V8 making 800 horsepower all motor. By gutting the interior and using lightweight suspension and braking components, weight is down to 2,700 pounds, giving the Pitbull Solstice a better power-to-weight ratio than the Bugatti Veyron. Getting a Pitbull kit for your car will cost you $100,000 plus your Solstice. That does it for our first day's coverage of the 2012 SEMA show. Join me back here tomorrow night when I walk through the halls and build my ideal fantasy vehicle from some of the best parts you can find inside. All the news you need to know. The feed, 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 feed. It's my
Monday, November 5th, and here are your top stories. Listen up, there's more downloadable content coming from our Skyrim. Whoa. Whoa. And in case you haven't heard, the latest update will let players ride on top of dragons. Dragons! It's called Dragonborn. This DLC also features a new villain and a new area to explore, complete with new armor and weapon types. Dragonborn will be available on Xbox 360 starting December 4th for 20 bucks. Unfortunately, no release date has been set for PC, PC or PlayStation owners. Sorry, guys. Aww. In other news, the International Space Station is making some noise today. NASA has launched a new service that sends subscribers a text message or email whenever the ISS is about to pass overhead. How cool. It's called Spot the Station. It tells users when and for how long the ISS will be visible and from what direction it'll appear so you know where to look. It's free to sign up, so if you want to be in the know, visit spotthestation.nasa.gov. Lastly, here's some headlines that may, uh, to make your Monday a little more entertaining. First, after box office success for The Expendables 2 last summer, a third movie is already in the works. And yesterday in a Facebook post, the OG action misfit Sylvester Stallone revealed a new addition to the crew, the one and only Nicolas Cage. Yeah! Well, it's still unclear as to what character Cage will play, but rumor is he'll be the new villain. And in the same post, Stallone reached out to Harrison Ford, Wesley Snipes, and Mickey Rourke. We'll see if they sign on, too. Next, do you remember that movie trailer from Miami Connection? You know, the one I showed you a while back about motorcycle ninjas in a band circa 1987? Well, they've released a new clip from the film, and I think you're going to love it. Take a look. And come on, after watching that clip, you know you don't want to miss it. I'm Sarah. <laughs> John loved it, don't deny it. Uh, I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. Stay tuned. Julia White from Total Blackout will be here live. The feed is brought to you by The General Insurance. For a great low rate you can get online, go to The General and save some time. Welcome the host of Total Blackout, Julia White. Yeah. You pay these people to do this. I walked in here, they didn't have any reaction at all. Of course we do. Are you kidding me? That's what their paycheck's all about. They just gotta clap. Yeah, shut up, shut up. It's not about you. Total Blackout Season 2. Yeah, man. How have, how have you upped the stakes this season? Uh, it's great. We got more money this year. So, hey! Uh, you know, we can uh, we can play with the uh, the contestants even more. We've got crocodiles and, and, and camels. Oh, oh, oh. And, uh, oh, yeah, we've, I mean... We've what also, is this? These people, I think they're bobbing for uh, a ring in there. And that, oh, that's a bunch of wigs. It's a bunch of wigs. Yes, and they're bobbing for for a ring. This woman actually, I think she bit it. Yeah, she bit it. Yeah, she bit it. Yeah, yeah. She 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 had a she had a sushi moment right there. She had a sushi moment. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be kissing that, are they? <laughs> Yuck. You ever thought it? You know, the, I always thought something like that would be good if you put their faces in the tank with those fish that eat skin. Oh. You know those no, little mini no, 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 no. We don't want to be anybody to get hurt on the show. We want to come back for more seasons. We want to <laughs> no you, piranha, no piranha. Do you get much say in anything that they do, or do you sometimes ever come up with an idea and say, you know, let's try this you out? You know, I, I, I do, I do. Um, in the first season, no, it was shut up, be happy you're here. But, yeah. in, but, <laughs> but in 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 this season, though, you know, I definitely I, I was able to get the producers to understand that sounds are something that we need to be playing with a lot more. Because yeah. when you're in the dark and you can't see anything, I'm telling you, man, you can't see your hand, and you hear like you know what sounds like a dinosaur you know Scare. exactly and for people who don't know the premise of the show is you put people in a situation in a, a blackout room and you they have to do a task yes and they don't know what is happening exactly they don't know what they're touching they can't see anything they don't know the spatial awareness of the room uh it's awesome man it's awesome to see people go through this you're mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, if you were in that situation, are you, uh, are you, you know, brave or are you a bit of a wimp? Well, I don't. Wimp is a strong, short word. Um, <laughs> All uh, right. No. Are, are you scared of things? Um, if I'm, I said animals, I'm, I'm, I'm black, so I'm gonna call the people. I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm as a matter of fact, for for Christmas Eve last year. Um, <laughs> I, I, we were hauling in gifts, and we left the door open in the house, and I could have sworn I turned around and I saw a tail 
a big bushy tail go by. And and I, I looked at my mom, and it was like, Mama, did you see that too? And she's like, Yeah, I thought I saw you. Okay, we just pretend like we didn't see it. And how big and, was the tail that you saw? And, you know, it's about yay high, about about yay high, yay bushy tail. And um, so we enjoyed Christmas Eve and Christmas, and we had dinner, and the baby opened up all the gifts, and and then uh, I turned around that evening and and looked around, and this time I saw the tail, and I'm like, Holy crap! Dad, something's been in here for like the last 48 hours with us. <laughs> what was it? And <laughs> so, so we called the people. Because again, I'm black. We got to call the people. And, um, <laughs> and my dad went in there, and, and then he came out very quickly, and something was in there. And, you know, the big brave white man came with all of his equipment. And he went in the room, and he came out with a rabbit, a desert <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> Don't awe me. It was no, a big damn no, rabbit. No, listen. I can, it was I, a big I, damn rabbit. I can, vouch, I can vouch for that. Desert <laughs> rabbits are pretty big. Okay, they yeah. look more like kangaroos. Exactly. It looked like See? a small, like the little evil kangaroo that used to be on the Looney Tunes. They got used to kick, kick people. <laughs> All right. So you, you're afraid of rabbits. Easter's not a good I'm holiday not for you. Of Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand you're a bit of a thrill junkie. I am a thrill junkie, though. I did bungee jump. I, I bungee jumped in. Uh, See, I couldn't do that. And, no and, way. And I, I paid them extra to dip me, dip me in the water. So you go down and you actually hit what you're going to bungee. Into. Yeah, you can you you can give them instructions so that at the end, once the once the spring back happens, it dips you just a little bit in the water, so about half your body goes into the water. Wow. And did it only go a little bit, or did you go right in? No, I mean you go you go by where half your body. You come out wet, you know. Weren't you afraid if it like snap because your ankles are all tied up? <laughs> well, you know, it was one of those things. The second I started going up, I, I began to regret. But uh, <laughs> no, no, seriously, I really do. You, it's it's you have a perspective of bungee jumping from being on the ground. Right. And a completely different perspective as you're going up. Did they have to shove you a little bit? And uh, no, 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 no. Again, I'm black, so I have these different techniques, you know, to get past these kind of moments. And I was talking to the guy as I was on my way up, and I'm like, hey man, look, do I need to stand like this? Do I need, you know, is there any kind of position or anything like that? He didn't even get one sentence out. By the time we stopped, I'd already walked off that bed. And you were gone. <laughs> I didn't even want to think about it. All right, so I have to talk about, you know, the, the, the famous uh, Steve Urkel. We must, we must. Can I get some applause? Yeah! yeah. The family, obviously. We, we, we pay for that stuff, right? Fam we pay for that stuff. Family <laughs> Matters, huge, massive hit. Now, you, you know, I got to talk, a personal question here from me. You went through, you started the show, you know, you were young, and yeah. then you had those really tight trousers, okay? Yes, yes. But then yes. you went through puberty during yes, the show. Yes. Did your trousers get bigger? You know, I will tell, I will, I will, I will share with you a really, really funny story <laughs> one time. I mean, I don't know, we are on cable, right? So I can, I mean, I can Go full uh, yeah, yeah, without yeah, dropping so, any bombs. Sort of, you might get bleeped if you say anything wrong. Well, well, I, I remember one time we were having notes, and 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 this is where you do run through, and the producers come in and they give you notes, and um, they gather kind of like just right there in the set and in, in the kitchen. And remember, you used to have that center island right there, and yes. the, the, the Long Island in the family in the, the Winslow kitchen. Um, I was kind of just hanging out back there, just kind of bent over. Um, by the fridge, and, and our executive producer, David, said, well, Jalil, are you, please come join us for notes. And I'm like, I can hear you from right here, Dave. I'm good. And he really thought that I was having, like, a true diva moment. I was 14 years old, and I was having an issue. <laughs> <laughs> and I needed that center island to keep my issue to myself. Well, thank God it was a big issue. Thank God it wasn't a small issue. And to this day, I almost wonder, does Dave Real ever remember that I was not being like, you know, a little, you know, Gary Coleman or something on set. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, Dave, because I, I was very firm. No, I can hear you from here. <laughs> I am not moving. So give me your notes. <laughs> give me your notes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up to Jaleel White. You can catch Total Blackout Tuesdays on Sci-Fi. <laughs> and now it's over to my lovely Candace. <laughs> Thank you, John. Up next, Matt Myra tells you which pad is right for you. The old ginormous one or the new mini. Brace yourself, first world problems are coming up. Yeah. Tomorrow on Attack of the Show. Comedian and comic book author Brian Posehn drops by the studio live to give us the skinny on the Merc with the mouth, Deadpool. Then Chris Gore plays buy, rent, or pass with the amazing Spider-Man and Steve Jobs the lost interview on DVD Day. And our resident car expert, Matt Farah, heads to Vegas to build his dream car at the SEMA Auto Show. It's Attack of the Show tomorrow at 7. And now, let's pour one out for the Nintendo GameCube.
By 2001, the old regime of consoles was being swept away. Atari was all but dead. The Dreamcast had been discontinued. Meanwhile, systems like the PS2 and Xbox began to take over the market, leaving Nintendo to make their stand with the GameCube. Codenamed Dolphin, the GameCube followed on the heels of the cartridge-based N64 and was Nintendo's first attempt at a disc-based console. With cartridges, you can only have a certain amount of music. The graphics could not be as high definition. You couldn't have full motion video. There was a, a, a myriad of reasons why Nintendo had to go to a disc-based system. The GameCube was initially released in Japan and the U.S. in late 2001 and saw worldwide distribution by mid-2002. But when the GameCube launched, I was working at the R-Zone at Toys R Us. Funny story about children, if you put a kiosk with a video game console up in your store, it's only a matter of time before one of those children pees on it. It was priced at $200 and was powered by IBM's PowerPC processor and an ATI graphics card. The console itself was adorable and it had great power on the inside. It wasn't the most powerful thing ever, but it looked good and developers knew what they were doing with it. The color palette would pop, the worlds were vast and expansive. It was a fun console. The GameCube required a memory card to save games, came boxed with a single controller, and like its older sibling, it had four controller ports across the front. The feel of the, the GameCube controller was awkward because it felt like you're holding like a boomerang that had these two little nubs on it. I always wanted to break it in half when I was playing some of their terrible games. The GameCube sold nearly four million units in its first six months, and expectations were high that it would be another hit for Nintendo. Games were released on an 8-centimeter mini-DVD, which would only hold 1.4 gigs of data, compared to a normal DVD that could hold 8.5. The limited storage space made it harder for developers. They couldn't pack in a ton of videos, the, the scores had to be cut down, and the game worlds had to be smaller. The GameCube's CDs, would not only would they get lost very easily, often not a bad coaster. Twelve titles were released in the U.S. for the system's launch, ranging from sports games to the solo adventure of Mario's brother, Luigi's Mansion. Luigi apparently could afford a mansion on a plumber's salary, which I don't understand. I don't even think the guy that owns Roto-Rooter has a mansion. <laughs> While the GameCube had the ability for online gaming, few developers would take advantage of it, and only four online games were released. This is why people don't take the Wii's online connectivity seriously, because when Sony and Microsoft, back in the day, made an effort to get people engaged online, the GameCube was like, nope, want to keep it in the living room. Despite this, over 600 games were released for the GameCube, with almost all of the hits being first-party titles developed by Nintendo. Games like the cel-shaded Zelda adventure Wind Waker. The Zelda game was nice because it sort of differentiated itself entirely from the previous Zelda games. As far as the look and playability was concerned, there was one week and a half where I was sick from school. I really missed a lot of college credits. In fact, I never finished. Zelda has a lot to do with that. The off-the-wall racer Mario Kart Double Dash. <laughs> And of course, the return of everyone's favorite plumber, Super Mario Sunshine. The fluid dynamics of Flood, Mario's little squirty backpack thing. The graphics were gorgeous. Delfino Island popped. The colors were great. Characters were weird. It was a Mario game. But the best-selling game for the system would be Super Smash Bros. Melee, selling just over 7 million copies. There's no way that this game won't be a success because it takes every popular character from every Nintendo franchise and puts it into one game. Despite these hits, sales would begin to lag and the GameCube had its price cut in half in 2003. While it would continue to see steady sales in Japan, it never picked up worldwide. The console would top out at 22 million units sold, far below the 50 million they had anticipated to sell. Cut, cut, cut! Ultimately, the GameCube was discontinued in 2007 to make room for the motion-friendly console, the Wii. It's sort of this odd place in the middle. It's like Star Trek III. It's in the middle of that awesome trilogy of Star Trek movies, and you kind of have to watch it, but you don't want to watch it. Ultimately, the GameCube underperformed. They completely skimped on online. They missed out on a storage medium with enough space to make compelling games. So Nintendo was right to sort of shelve it and move on to the Wii. Hey, it's Matt Myra. Hey, everybody, how you doing? I love the 
cube. It, it is adorable. I like the Nintendo GameCube. But a lot. what do you have for me today? I got something a lot smaller than the Nintendo GameCube. Apple had a huge event the other week announcing a bunch of new devices, including a tiny version of the iPad. It's the iPad Mini. Here's some more info on it. The iPad now has a little brother with the iPad Mini. Apple's new tablet features a 7.9 inch IPS display with the same resolution as the iPad 2, and it's powered by a dual core A5 processor. This new tablet can be yours, starting at 329 bucks. Here it is, the iPad hey. Mini. Ooh. It's small, obviously, that's the first thing you'll notice. Second thing you notice, how light it is. Mm. Go ahead, hold it. That's Ooh. about 0.68 of a pound. That's not really a thing, I just said 5.3 inches by 7.8 inches. Uh, it's only 0.28 inches thick, it's very thin. There's an aluminum back on there, it comes in black and white. Uh, we have the black model with us here. Button layout, super familiar to you if you have an iPad. It's really just a scaled down version of that. Uh, and even more so, a scaled down version of the iPad 2. We'll get to that later. Uh, the real thing you want to know about this is uh, that it's one of the most comfortable 7 inch tablets we've held. And it's nice, it, it feels great, right? No, it does feel great. I mean, it's, a, it's nice 7 inches, but I'm used to yeah. holding the 10 inch in my hand. I bet you are, John. And. Uh, <laughs> 7.9, um, everybody. 7. It's 7.9. 7. 9. Yeah. 10 in, but, 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 but it is comfortable. It, it, you know, it really is. It's, uh, but is it you know, any good? How's the well, screen? Here's, let's talk about the screen. It's not good. The screen is not good, everybody. I'm saying it right now. Resolution 1024 by 768. Sounds good at first, right? Everyone's like, hey, that sounds Sorry. great. But then you realize the Nexus 7, Kindle Fire HD, both have higher resolutions oh, and oh, on a smaller oh. screen. So you're getting more pixels per inch. If you have an iPhone 4S, look at the difference here. Retina iPad versus the iPad Mini. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's like the Nintendo GameCube versus something new. Uh, <laughs> if you have an iPhone 4S or 5, the retina display, you're going to look at this thing and you're going to think that you forgot your glasses somewhere. Or if you don't have glasses, you're going to think you need them because it's that fuzzy. Uh, that's the point. It's fuzzy. I, I didn't enjoy it. You want to read on this thing because it's the right size for reading. And then you try to read on it and you're like, that's blurrier than it should be. Okay, so reading is not good, but what about yeah. the thing I was thinking of is for traveling, great, light, yeah. put it in a bag. Sure. Movies. Want to watch movies on it? It's going to be a little bit better than the reading experience. Is. Uh, you can watch internet videos. Here's the problem though, the screen itself, look at that gorgeous man right there, you know him. Yeah, I do. Uh, the, uh, the thing is, look at this, it's, it's 16 by 9, so you're going to have black bars, you're going to have letterboxing on the top and bottom of most of the media that you're going to watch. Color reproduction though is very good, brightness is also good. When you're surfing the web, if you're on eBay, maybe looking for a torchwood jacket. Yeah, or Doctor Who. Oh, that yeah. guy, I prefer. David's used to holding the 10 too, so oh. not the 7. <laughs> That's why, that's why his nickname's 10-inch. Anyway, um... I feel right. like you're saying that wrong. <laughs> Let's talk about what is under the hood. How fast is the iPod Mini? The iPad Mini, let me tell you, uh, if you have an iPad I just said 2, iPod don't Mini. worry about it. If you have an iPad 2 <laughs> at home, dust it off and then use it. That's exactly how fast this thing is. Uh, it utilizes the A5 processor with 512 megs of RAM. So yep. really what you're getting is a small version of the iPad 2. That thing that came out in 2011. <gasps> yeah, so take a look. Here they are running next to each other. You're going to see the iPad 2 is a, just a hair slower than the iPad mini, but still they're running the same OS. It's essentially the same thing. The iPod Touch we reviewed uh, a couple weeks ago has similar specs to this, but that has a retina display and it's $30 cheaper. Okay. So if you're looking for something that's like portable, you know, with a nice screen, maybe you go a little bit smaller, get the iPod Touch for a little bit less money. I can't that's believe it. I'm so it. shocked yeah. so far. Now this has got a five megapixel camera that shoots 1080p HD video. Yeah. Um, now the camera frame, is, is the camera any good? The it's it is actually, it's, the camera's not bad. They're, they're both pretty good. Uh, the nice thing about the size of the iPad mini, Take a look at this, snapping pictures while I'm on the iPad 2 going, why do I need this smaller version of this? Uh, <laughs> FaceTime is actually better on this size tablet. I like it a lot because what you can do, it's more portable. See me enjoying showing everything to everyone. That's the studio, mom. That's Jose. Oh. Uh, the picture resolution appears to be better on this screen because it's smaller. It's really not any different as far as resolution is concerned. You're not going to get like a better image, but I will hate you less if you're taking pictures with that than with a 10 inch. So you go around and you, sh you show your mom, yeah, you say, hey, look at the look. studio, this is what I do, this is what I look like. Oh my. Craigslist, misconnections. <laughs> So all in all, yeah. this is this you know is, this is it. It's it's so it's not sounding very good so far. Yeah, right. All well, right, so you you can get the iPad Mini with 16 gigs of storage from Apple for 329. Matt Meyer, I'm almost afraid yeah, to ask yeah. this. Really, yeah. what is your verdict? We're giving it a three out of five, kids. Oh. I know. Oh.
Listen, it's a, it's a nice, it's, a, it's built very nicely. It's comfortable as far as seven inch tablets are concerned. However, the screen is not up to par with most users are gonna expect from Apple and the price is stupid. It's very high. If you're looking for a seven inch tablet around there, save yourself a lot of money. Get a Google Nexus 7 or a Kindle Fire HD for 130 less dollars. Oh, wow. So in other words, let someone else buy it for you for Christmas. Yeah, you can do that too. <laughs> All right, thanks Matt Myra! That's it for today's Gadget Pro. Hey! What a fun show. It was good. Back. You want to go to the Twitter wall real quick? Yeah, so what do EQ, we got here? EQ, uh, Washu, uh, Barrowman Twist sounds like a refreshing beverage. I wish I was having uh, with dinner. Vote Brian Brain Spiders 22. I'm having you a hard time reading talk. right now. Yeah. I didn't sleep at all last night. I got up at the crack and flew back from Florida, so I'm a little out of it. Yeah, today. that's Tomorrow what she's telling everybody. <laughs> that's what she's telling the world. Uh, that's the truth. It's really good to be back with you. I'm having. It's I'm nice very to excited seriously. To have you back. It's a place where I feel very comfortable standing right next to you at a podium. No. Oh. I like that. Do you? I don't know. Yeah. I'm Thanks to Jaleel White, Matt Farah, Matt Farah, Paris, Santa Maria, and Sarah Underwood. That's it from us. Good night, everybody. And thanks to John Farah. He's going to be here for a long time. Thanks to Candace. Love you all. See you later.